looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Welcome everyone to Light on Living. I'm Light Coach Lisa, holistic nutritionist and life coach, helping to lighten the load of life's challenges. Each show we shine the spotlight on helpful techniques, mindsets, lifestyles, and inspiring stories to help you get through, not over, life's challenges. Kids love to show you the pictures they've drawn. You know those ones, <laughs> the crafts, the crafts, like all the handmade little fun things that they've made. And they especially love to sing you the songs that make them really happy. Every time I visit my nieces, one of them, like I have two of them, so one of them, she always has this beautiful painting or drawing that she's done. She's so proud to show this to me. And my other niece, she's usually into uh, dance or gymnastics, and she has to show me the routine. Oh, goodness, the trampoline was so much fun in the summer on that one. <laughs> so I'm sure each one of you can remember a time when you've created something in your, your own way. Maybe it's not artistic. Maybe it's something like for myself when I was younger, mine was, look at my, my math quiz, like, you know, you get a really good mark at it or something like that. Like, all children, we're really confident and comfortable and excited to share because we find joy and that pleasure in something positive that we just want other people to have it. It's not always about look at me, look at me, but it, it is about sharing that joy, and they want to be the ones to, to give it to you. But sometimes as we get older, we can let the fear by the rejection or judgment or I don't want to say embarrassment, but you know that feeling you're just not ready to be seen yet? And we can let those things hold us back from that time of us being, you know, innocent. And then we think, oh, goodness, I want to show something. I want to share something. But can I? How can I? What will happen once it happens? See, I love when people share what matters to them, what has meant something to them at some point in their life, and what stories they do want to tell or even information they feel is valuable. That's late. It's kind of that's why I even do this show. It's I really want to share the information and other people's stories of what has been important to me or changed my life in some way, helped me. And I know one way, of course, that we're all very familiar is, is through books. So maybe you've written a book. Maybe you want to write a book. Maybe you're in the middle of writing a book. <laughs> and what I wanted to be able to share with you today is the journey a book goes on and how it honestly gets to take on a life of its own. Now, there are a lot of steps, and along with those steps are a lot of emotions. So I am thinking and hoping that we have a guest today. I'm just going to do a little pause to see if anybody's on the line with me. Hello? And I think we – okay. So I believe that – see, remember I talked about at the beginning how we are not going to just get – over or over challenges we are going to get through them so today may be a show that we get through some of these challenges um it seems that perhaps our guest today is not quite available but you know what that's okay um this is actually a very passionate subject of mine I, i'm excited to learn more and i think what what i like to include in the show then today is um some tapping which is emotional freedom technique of tapping to do these things the reason why books First of all, I love books. I love books so much. I feel like they are my best friends. I, I go to books often to receive information that maybe I just, I need, I need to learn something. I need some comfort or um, I just want to expand my own thinking and my own feelings that I want to hear about somebody else's insight and, and what they've gone through or it's very, maybe it's very technical. In fact, I'm the one that will open a box of things. And if there's a thing of instructions, I'm definitely reading the instructions. I'll stand back and look at the project itself and try to figure it out with my hands. But I'm definitely going to be reading those instructions as well. This was not me as a child, though. Me as a child was, Dad, why do you have to read that? It's going to take forever. Let's just jump in and do it. <laughs> and so I think a little bit of maturity has come on. Not maturity, sorry. Experience. And not doing things quite the you know, so well, maybe my, my project would have been built lopsided because I didn't, I didn't read something properly. But the whole thing about books, and because now I am going to do this show solo, 
I'm going to visualize in my mind here which route I want to take. Um, books. Okay, let me, I'm going to re restructure here. So books for me, I have gone through so many times where I think, I'm going to write a book. That would be a great book. I have the title. Oh, this would be so easy. And then I've sat down to write the book. And nope, it's just not going to be that easy. And it may be coming from maybe I haven't researched enough the steps or the processes. Or I wonder, what am I going to do with this book when I'm done? What? what am I, do I now have to get a team? What, is it going to go into bookstores? Am I going to have to sell it? What responsibility lies in with writing a book? So a lot of times I'll go back and forth between the actual original purpose of me wanting to write a book because I just want to share something. I just want to be able to share it. And then the other side of things going, there's that whole, how public do I have to go? Do I want to go? Maybe I do want to be known for this. There's, a book could be so helpful in, in careers, but it also can be had nothing to do with a, a career thing. It's just you wanting to express something and go through it. And I think right now the, um, the World Tapping Summit is going on. So I have been, I believe, I think it was day nine. I'm trying to think back here. Um, I've been doing so much tapping every day. I'm just so grateful for, um, for the Ortners for, for, for launching that and doing this for a couple of years now that there can be a lot of emotion and fear and not knowing what the next step might be with your book. So I think that's what I want to do is um, I'm not even thinking it. I am going to do that. We are going to do some tapping a little later in this, in this show to walk us through some of those emotions of the books right now, actually, um, I'm in the middle of being a part of an anthology, and which and I really hope I said that right, <laughs> is where there's a, um, a lot of people who really have a story or a message, or it could be personal about their own lives, or it could be fiction, and they get together, and they each write a chapter in, for a book, and then you feel like you're grouped together, and, and honestly, that was, that was probably my most comfortable thing I think I needed to do, because I love teamwork, and I, and I you know, maybe, maybe it's a nervous thing, I don't want to step out on my own, or maybe it's just, I just enjoy the comfort in knowing that one of my chapters would be, you know, hugged and squished with other chapters of other wonderful stories, but um, there's so many different ways you can go, fiction and nonfiction, educational, um, and it could be little ones and big ones and full of pictures and not full of pictures, so the best way to find out is, how is it that you want to express something that means something to you? And sitting down and just really, and I was going to say tapping into that, but I really do mean, and tapping into the feeling of, first of all, does it create like a life inside of you? Does it make your heart feel really open? And it's almost like a mission. Like it's, it's impossible for you not to want to share this, this. So forgetting all those questions and fears that could be surrounding it. What do I do next? What's going to happen? How do I even do this? Um, these, there are a lot of things like that that put that aside just to allow that voice to come up inside you to say, this is something I think about almost every day. I, I want to get this out. Or when you, maybe it's a theme or, or a message that um, you've been reading from somebody else and you want to respond to it in a way, like you have something bubbling up inside of you that has said, I want to respond to that person. I want to take this further. Or I totally not disagree. We don't want to have too much conflict, but if, if you believe there's a different way uh, that's unique of your own that you'd like to share, then let all that come up first. And I would suggest that that's a great thing to start in your own, your own brainstorm. Have a brainstorming session with your heart and soul and mind and, and, and keep the pen and paper there. It's always great to, to write things down with your actual pen and paper or whatever you're comfortable with, pencil or fountain pen or paintbrush, paint a picture. You know, get all that out first and see almost like the chapters will like come together and come for you to see what you're going to do. Another emotion that comes along with books, and this is, I, I'm actually really happy to share this with a lot of people. I, I love when, actually one of my, my, she was my client for years, but now we're just such good friends. She's actually written a chapter for the book as well that, um, that we're about to, I believe there's 30 chapters in this book that's being published. Um, you'll have to wait and see what book that is. It, it, we're going to have everything released shortly, but, um, Something that it was really interesting for me to hear from her, and she shared this with me, and I'm so grateful that she did, is that she didn't tell anybody that she was writing this chapter. It's a beautiful chapter. It's like a really intense chapter. She's a phenomenal writer. And she didn't tell anybody. And so when I let her know, oh, we're getting close. You know, all the chapters are filled. We're going to publish it. She got a little bit nervous. And I thought it was so vulnerable. She was so vulnerable to share that with me. She said, Nobody knows that I, I have done this. Nobody knows that I write. Or what, what happens if people that I know read my story? Like she wants to share it with, with people to help them, but she doesn't want anybody that she knows 
to read that story because we all have a very personal attachment to our words when we share them. And sometimes, and I was so proud of her for stepping out and being so brave and courageous and knowing that two things here, knowing that her story could actually help someone to inspire them and influence them, but also she had enough, even though she may be hard on herself and judges herself and, and feels like, no, I'm not good enough and I can't do this and I'm scared. She had enough courage in herself to say, and love for herself, I'm going to add in there. She had enough love for herself to even say, but I am a good writer and I do want to share my story. And she kind of, it was like a, like a personal heart gamble that rolls the dice and says, okay, I love myself just enough that I hope that everybody else does too. And also I think the two is, it's her stepping back and just saying, you know what? What if they don't like it? It's, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. And I think that's a big thing. And I, I want to tap on a lot of these emotions that can come up later because she doesn't know the steps and journey that a book will take. In fact, I'm not even quite sure of the steps and the journey will take. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to recap that later um, after I, I'll do some, some inquiring questions and, and do a little write-up review uh, after that. So, I've always been drawn to people who, who are in publishing companies and who are um, marketing the market books and stuff. And I often wondered, do they help the writer through those emotional ups and downs and those questions that are more emotional than actual, like, what happens? What happens to my book? What's going to go on with this book once it's done? And there's a lot of fear, too, because we think once we write this book, well, what if it's a big flop? And what even constitutes a big flop? What does that mean? And, and would just writing it be enough for you? So there's, for me on my end, I really do think of a lot of um, questions even before writing it. And sometimes that's the hardest part. And I know we're going to head on to commercial here. When we come back, we'll talk a bit more about those emotions and we're going to tap some of them out. Best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Join me, Tammy Adams, intuitive life coach and spiritual healer, for my new show, Karma Talk. Learn how to get rid of your karma so that you can start living the life you are meant to live. I am not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Join me on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, for Karma Talk on Home Time Radio. Welcome back to the Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right. A group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Art Council. Right, back to the journey a book takes, and I am really going backwards before the book is written um, today, right now on this show. And the book, I, I really want to go back to that imagining the book. This is what I spend quite a bit of time on. Um, for me, I've written uh, many articles and short stories or blog posts. I mean, how many of us were all authors, if you think about it, because we always post on you know, Facebook or some kind of social media. And that, oh, this has actually been fun. Uh, on the weekend, I was at, we're all helping, helping somebody in a new venture that they're on, and one of my girlfriends there, she wanted to make a post on Facebook. Now, I sat there, and she was just going to you know, put a picture up and write a post and send it off. So we all sat down. We're going to have a little nibble of cheese and crackers for a minute. And 
it was funny because I sat there and she was really, really putting this um, this thought, this effort in. And I really, at first I thought, wow, this is really nice that she, she really wants these right words and she's so careful with it. And it, it really meant a lot to her. And as we sat there and, and it was still going on and we were all chit-chatting away, taking a little break from the work. And it was probably, and I'm not exaggerating. I want to say it was 45 minutes, but I'll even say 30. It was about 30 minutes it took for her. This is a couple lines, maybe five lines, but to try to find that she was so filled with happiness and joy and wanted to share it with the world. And she wanted to inspire people because she was trying to think of a way to show her appreciation that was she was being able to share this moment in, in somebody else's life. She was also trying to capture that joy and that fun that, that she was having. And then she also wanted to inspire people to be able to to come and visit and, and do and, and be part of this. So she right there was an author. She was sitting there and she was trying to evoke an emotion, inspire action. And I I actually love that it took that long because it really and I'm not saying that people, you know, I, I myself will just cross. In fact, I even had a spelling mistake on my thing, and then Facebook wouldn't let me edit this morning. It was kind of funny, so I did a correction. But there's a lot. Um, that one took me a lot because I had to really admit my, my mistake there. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. And uh, I really just loved that it took her, that, that she took. She took the time. She really took the time to organize that before she wanted it to go out. She really wanted to have meaning. And I think when people decide, they make that decision. I want to write this book. And then they do take the action. That's a big, that's a big confident decision. And I really want everybody to honor that. If they're at that point and they decided and they have it, you know, forget all the fear for a second, forget all the questions, forget all the I don't knows, and just really honor yourself. Say, you know what? This is a big step, and I'm, I'm listening to my heart and my and my my, my soul journey, my purpose. That I do want this out there. And a lot of times, I'm a tapper. I really love tapping. At first, I used to think I love tapping. Um, because you get to move fast and stay in one spot and just get this energy out. And I thought, oh, I must be just expressing like getting this energy out. But um, I really do love how it can tap on a certain uh, points in your body to, and then you can reprogram and, and reset things. So I, in my way to celebrate things sometimes, I don't always tap when I just have a problem. I tap when I'm, when I'm excited and when I'm really happy, really grateful. And I think that's where even one time when I was watching her and she, and she put that post out, I was so happy I wanted to, to share in that moment. So as I said, everybody can be an author in their own way, uh, big, small, long, short, 500 pages, one page, one article, but really find out what you're comfortable with and you then expand actually and start off with one way and then go to the other. But if I may, um, I want to introduce if you don't know what tapping is right now, um, and if you do, it's a nice little review, a little reminder. That's why I love when the uh, summit comes on. Because it, um, just like when the food revolution will put one on, I, you know, and then I get my five to ten days of, of, of food. It's great when we can immerse ourselves in these. Right now, I'd like to tap to the emotions of, we'll do, we'll do a, a little, so it's a three rounds. We'll do the concerning, the negative, and then the positive. We'll do the turnaround point, and then we'll move forward. But I do want to tap on the emotion of getting started, of, of taking that passion and that idea that you do have in your heart. And, and let's walk that process of even deciding if you do want to write a book, if you do want to write anything. Oh, it's so funny. I was going to tap, and I thought, oh, I got to put my phone down. I felt awkward. But um, so really what I want to walk through. So the points are karate chop, the side of your palm of your hand. And if anybody, if you are listening, you can't visualize this. Just you can uh, Google research. But I will name them, kind of the, name the points, then we can walk through them. But the, the points would be that I'm going to use. And some people do them different um, order or, or not all of them or more as the karate chop. And this is always our statement, like our statement was set up, a set up thing that we say. Then we're going to just tap along the face, which will be the, between the eyebrows and then our temples, the side of the eye, then under our eyes. That always feels good when you massage or give a sinus infection. And then under the nose. Doo, 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 and then under your lip where your chin is, like just that little divot. And then right between your collarbone, where like a man's tie would sit. And then under the arms, I usually cross my arms like I'm giving myself a big hug and kind of tap, tap like a hug. And then we finish off on the top of the head. So as I'm going to run through a couple of things, the setup statement to me is really where we're going to like get that big breath out like, oh, okay, this is what I'm going through. I, and you, or you've made that list right now. We're going to put this into our book mode. We're going to make the proclamation that we want to write a book. I want to write this book. I'm inspired to write this book. I'm motivated to write this book. I'm moved to write this book. 
So the even though is the really fun part. I love the setup statement. So right now, maybe we'll do a couple even those. Like, I really want to tap that. So it's fun. I thought I want to do this. Even though I don't know how to write a book. Even though I'm scared to write this book. Even though I do not know where to start to write a book. Even though I'm scared I won't even have the proper thoughts to match the words, to match the feelings. Even though other people think it's silly that I want to write a book. Even though I think I'm too old to write a book. Even though I think I'm too young or inexperienced to write a book. So we've, I think I've covered a lot of those feelings that I'm kind of getting from people right now. So that we'll see one of those, even though, because it doesn't matter. It does matter. It matters a lot, but meaning we're not going to let it stop us. So even though, even though I'm scared, even though I'm concerned, even though I don't know, I truly love and accept myself. Even though I'm scared, I truly and deeply believe that courage will come. Support will be around me. You really want to tap that out, so let's say that again. So even though, find out the feeling for you, I truly and deeply accept and love myself. I accept myself. I accept these feelings. I love them. I love them for me. This is me. We're going to point those, uh, t- the points on the points of our, our face now, going through them. So, middle of the eye, temple, under the eye, under the nose, under the lip, the chin, and then so on. So, here we go. Good thing. I'm really scared to write this book. So, tapping, tapping. Scared to write this book. What will I say? How will I start? I'm really, my mind's all over the place. I can't imagine where I'll begin and how it will end. I don't know what people will think of me. I don't know if people even want to read what I have to say. I don't know who will help me. I don't know how much money this will take. I don't know if anybody will buy my book. What if everybody buys my book and then judges me? We're still tapping, going to the points. Get out any emotion that might be holding you back from just the starting of the book, just the start. This is it. Just talking about those negative, fearful things. I have been thinking of writing this book for so long. What makes me think I'm going to do it now? I don't have time to write this book. There's so much going on in life. I don't have the time to do it. Let's see what else is coming up. What else is coming up? I don't know the structure of a book. Would I write it? Would I type it? Do I get someone to proofread it? Maybe I should get a ghostwriter. Maybe I can't do this. What, can, what, what will change in my life anyways? Will it be good? Will it be bad? Will it just sit on the shelf? Will it just sit on my computer? Mostly. I'm just scared that it won't be a success. Mostly, I'm just scared of another book. Wasted time, wasted money. Who wants to read my stuff anyways? Ah, so, there. Kind of feeling a little deflated and beat up here. So, let's, let's turn this around a little bit. We're going to do a karate chop. Even though I have all those fears. Even though I have all those concerns. Even though I don't have any of those answers. I truly and deeply believe that I love myself and I accept myself and those things will all come in time. Even though I'm not feeling so confident, I truly believe and accept that I'm confident enough that I have something of value to share. I just want to do a round of the tapping now. That was a karate chop. Let's just go through. And this is a perfect thing to say right between the eyebrows here. I believe I will receive what is necessary to allow me to start writing this book. Temples. I believe something's in me to share no matter what. Under the eye. My heart is open enough, enough to receive just a little support. I'm creative. I want to share this. 
I have the love inside of myself to know that things will come. I am present right here, right now, and I want this. I believe in myself. The judgment of myself is that I can do this, and I don't need to know how. One more round, because I really want to do a positive closing off of this. She's going to the temple here. This is my experience of life. I get to decide, me, I get to decide if I write this book. I get to decide to write how to write this book. And I get to decide what the book does, where the book goes. If the book is published or not, I get to decide. I'm feeling the power. I'm empowered. I feel the confidence. I feel the love. My book will be loved. No matter what it looks like, no matter how it sounds, it will be me. It'll be an extension of me and it may just sharing. And my words may express things that are now, are the past and in the future, but they're all me. And it's okay. It's beautiful. I accept it and I love it. I want to write this book and I decided to write this book. And I love and deeply accept everything that I will write for this book. <sighs> I already love your book, everybody. Everybody who's writing the book right now, I already love it. I can feel I just, there's so many things that come up when we're ready to express ourselves to the world. It's important to be very loving and accepting and to take that step no matter what. Because right now, if something has come up in you that you are ready to do this and you want to do this. And when we come back after the commercial, it's about to come up. I want to talk about those who do have the book. You've written it. Or it's almost pretty much written. And you're ready for the next step. So a few more tapping when we come back after the break. We'll get through those ones as well. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, AscendingHearts.com. Every Tuesday on Living with Moxie, join Shefali Burns and Donna Martuge in conversations designed to take you to the next level, where we highlight ideas, resources, and strategies that provide you with the leverage you require to meet and exceed your business and personal goals. Each week on Living with Moxie, we will lead conversations related to success, achievement, fulfillment, and extraordinary, vibrant living. Are you ready to live with Moxie? Join us. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that tapping that we just went through on the first step of acknowledging and getting ready to write your book. So the next step, so say, say you're the person who's actually yeah, already written I, the book. Another call. Oh, okay. Oh, oh wonderful. All oh, right there. Well, hi there, Mike. <laughs> hey, hi, Lisa. You How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so glad that you could join the show. 
Um, it was it's funny because you called at the most well second perfect time because I was just going to go in and talk to the people who are have already written their book and they're about to go into that publishing part. So see, it was second perfectness. Oh, ex- excellent! And sorry, I'm calling a bit late. I got tied up on another line and I just uh, just got off the phone and I thought I got to call you. So. Yes, yes, well, that's okay. Well, we, we are we are live right now, and I would just like to share with everybody then um, a little bit about who you are and why you're here on the call. So let me share with everybody. We are, are very lucky to have um, Mike Davey here. He is a C- uh, president and CEO, actually, of Manor House Publishing, and I'm totally going off the cuff here because now I wasn't have my introduction for you. Um, I, when I reached out to Mike, I had read about him online, actually, and I just reached out because there was an article or a post or something, Mike, that you had written that, I, you know, in my world, I just thought, oh, he's just a, you know, not just, but, you know, you're the, the president and the CEO of a publishing company. I wasn't aware at the time that you were, as well, quite the uh, publisher author that you are. But what really struck out to me when I read something that you'd written, that you really cared, like you really reached out to both the author of the books and then have this kind of the thing about the book, I really felt like you loved both, the person, the author, and the book. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be great to have you come on and share with the people, the authors or the aspiring authors, about the book they're about to write or have written and, and, and help them, them to see and understand and hear and know what journey does the book go on once it's written. And that's exactly where we are in this call right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Terrific. <laughs> well, that's that's great stuff. So, um, is, is there? Would you like me to provide some advice, or or um, if someone's looking yes, to well, book publish? Or? Yes, I think what we could, would be able would be wonderful for people to know is, so if somebody's written a book. You know, they've gotten to that hard. You know, whichever all the struggles that maybe they're a little bit worried about this or that, and they've they've written it. What what happens to a book once somebody's written it? Like they put the pen down and they've written the end. What happens? Where? What should happen from there? Well, it's actually quite involved because that getting the book written is is uh, is certainly a huge important step, and, and you know, and it's absolutely yeah. crucial, of course, for, to make the book happen. But then, uh, you know, almost an equally, I would say, equally large part of the work then becomes getting it to market and uh, you know, possibly mm. getting a publisher or self-publishing or you know. Basically, getting it out to the getting it out to readers, and it's very much uh, an incredibly involved process. Um, in some ways, it's it's fairly straightforward. I mean, you you if you if you can you know latch on to a to a nice a good publishing house, um, you know they'll do a lot of the the legwork in terms of getting it in into the systems okay. for stores and so on. And uh, so that's not too, and, once you have a pub. Uh, once you have a publisher, then you can if, – if that's a fear that somebody is sitting back right now feeling, um, oh, gosh, how am I going to get to the stores? That, that's, that's the role of the pub, publishing company. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. So if, if, you, if you go the traditional route and, and uh, line up with a, with a publisher, uh, the publisher will take on a lot of that work in terms of getting it into stores, getting it online, um, getting it into international you know, rights uh, Fairs like the Frankfurt Book Fair and so on, where you can sell secondary okay. language rights, that type of thing, foreign language rights. Uh, one of the key things, though, is is uh, the marketing of it. And here, more and more, it's looked upon to the author to have some mm. sort of, you know, do they have a platform? Um, do, right. Does the author have a following? Uh, are they able to, you know, reach a fairly large audience with the publisher's help of course but primarily when people are buying a book they're buying it on the basis of the author they may not even know mm. who published it you know so it's it's okay, it's really yes. an author thing and a lot of authors don't i find don't think about the marketing of their book their their focus is purely mm-hmm. on writing it and then they they don't take this sort of business they don't put on the business hat i suppose and and start right. thinking about well how you know how can we really effectively get it out there to the people and get them to buy it i think that actually is i think where a lot of people do sit they they 
they don't have that business hat because that's, they're more creative and they're more of the writer. And, and that's maybe what's holding, I don't know, maybe what's holding people back from taking that next step because they're like, but I don't want to, I don't have an audience. I don't have a following. Um, it, and they might not even know how to find a good, like not a good, I don't mean as in a good, good, but a good alignment, a good match for them as a, a publisher, like as a publishing house. So how would they find the right one? And, and then where, does a publishing company help them to build a platform as an author? Well, you've raised a, a number of really good points, Lisa. I did. Because, yeah, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> absolutely. A lot of a lot of authors aren't even thinking along those lines. They're they're thinking, I've written the book, I've done my job. <laughs> now it's now yes. it's up to a publisher to you know to to make it all happen. You know, and and in I suppose in the in the old days, so to speak, that was. That was, you know, certainly the case, but also in the old days when you had a relatively small number of very large publishing houses, the chances are, you know, most 90, 99% of authors weren't going to get published at all. Um, so, we, oh. so there's good and bad with the new system where there's, where there's smaller publishing houses that are, you know, thriving and so on. Finding the best publishing house is, uh, I mean, that's a great question because uh, mm. I guess what you'd want to do is, is go online um, – you know, do do sort of a search. Um, a lot of people will, you know, quite naturally start at the top. So they'll they'll approach Random House and Bantam and Doubleday and so on and so forth, and normally, you know, uh, get rejected, which is pretty standard uh, because the, the very large <laughs> publishing houses, well, they're they're basically very picky, and they can, you know, they know. That they can they can get the books to market and and so on and they don't take any chances so they will right. you know if they do someone who's who's uh, a relative unknown I mean that's that's very rare very very rare mm -hmm. I mean they they normally you know if you look at look at the uh, the list of these large very large publishing houses uh, a lot of their authors are almost household names and these yes. are authors yeah. they're you know, they were celebrities to start with, or they, uh, if they were business people, they became, you know, highly successful, and then they, you know, they put out nonfiction books to reach a very established audience. If they okay. were, um, if they were great novelists, they may have started out with a smaller publishing house, and over time built an yes. audience, and then moved on to the giants. So I, mean, so, I mean, one of the things we do as a small publishing house is we sort of lock people in for, you know, usually three or four books because it takes a while to oh. to build reputation. And we also don't want to I like go that. through all the, Yeah, actually, we don't want to go through all the work of, of, of bringing somebody in, uh, you know, making them famous, so to speak. And mm -hmm. then this, a large publisher comes along and just, you know, takes them over. I like so that as the energy. That's a good energy exchange, though, because you're saying we're willing to, we, we believe in you, and and we also, you know, you, and then the author's believing in you as well, so there's a two-way there, um, and the exchange is, but stick around, well, let's, let's build this together and see what we can do together. Um, I think that, absolutely. Is, is there any and harm? Other, is, sorry? I was going to say, is there any harm in, oh, yes. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Ahead. Okay, I was just, just going <laughs> to add to that and just say that, um, it doesn't actually – this approach of, you know, um, going for, say, a three-book deal or a four-book deal in some cases, um, it doesn't preclude the possibility of the author being uh, sort of picked up by a large publishing house right away. It just okay. – it just or large – a giant publishing house because we're, you know, a decent size. But um, okay. it doesn't preclude that because what can then happen is if a large publishing house sees that, you know, we've done very well with this author – and they would really like to pick them up, but they're under contract with us for another, you know, say another couple of books. Um, mm -hmm. Then the very then the giant publishing house can then approach us and say, "Well, um, we'd really like to pick up this author. Can we buy out their contract from you?" So then everybody gains. Oh. Um, you know, oh. Manor House gets some compensation for losing an author that we've actually developed. The giant publishing house picks up an author that Manor House has already done all the legwork in establishing, and the author themselves have uh, benefited from the relationship with Manor House, and now they're moving 
on to the larger publisher who will also presumably pay them you know a good advance and so on and so forth and possibly be able to do a bit more to you know get their book in the marketplace although we certainly do an awful lot in that regard so but but i think it, it then becomes a win win whereas in the alternative if we pick them up for one book then you know if if it goes very mm-hmm. well then you know and a larger publisher picks them up we don't receive anything from that if it you know and on the other hand too it can it can lead to a lot of disappointment on the author's uh side because once they're open to start searching elsewhere they may do that and that can take a long time and then they may come back to us and say well i wasn't able to find anybody bigger to publish me so are you interested and we're like well sorry because we've now you know filled our years program with with other you know authors and we're not interested in going through that kind of uh, exercise again because it's quite disappointing, you know, spending a lot of time and effort to consider a work and yes. then find out. But, and that's something else, actually, that, uh, that that comes to mind is that some publishers or some authors, rather, will make multiple submissions. And is this a good they, idea? Well, it's not really because okay. what happens is when we're presented with a novel, let's say, um, we'll read it, we'll give it good, you know, good consideration, and again, it's very disappointing from our end if we find out that this author has basically oh. submitted this book to virtually everybody, and you know, and, and now they're maybe going to make another deal. So we with someone else, so mm. and they may be smaller than. Um, so we've wasted all this time basically considering it. So even though it's a frustrating process, I, what I would recommend to all authors, uh, especially new ones starting out, is you know don't go the multiple submission route. If you want to start at the, you know if you want to start at the top, so to speak, and try the big publishing houses, and you know most likely get those you know rejection letters and so on, um, mm-hmm. so you're gonna, you know, certainly do that. And then, but you know, do, do more or less approach them, you know, one at a time, and ask for okay. a reasonably quick response, like maybe 30 days or something, if you could, you know, um, so that okay. you know you're not tying up a lot of time. And that way, too, the publisher knows, okay, we're being approached exclusively, yes, so we can look at this book, and we can spend some time with it. We can, you know, read through it. We can see if there's a market for it and so on and so forth, and not feel like we're wasting our time, because then when we go to call the author, they're like, oh, I just, you know, decided to go with, you know, publisher XYZ or whatever. And and so, you know, it, it's it's a it's a better process all around. And, and Thank you. I love respect. that approach. We're, we're going to go to, com- oh, we're going to go to commercial. We'll be back in just two minutes or so. And then I have some great questions. That was a great share. Well, thanks. <laughs> Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org.
right back to the journey that this book is taking. And um, Mike, I really appreciate that you shared with us that um, the importance of and the value of actually knowing that even if you start off, it does not even even though, because whether it's a small, medium, or, or large um, publishing company, there's no downside because you can always start with a smaller company and then and still you're not tight, you're not imprisoned. It, everybody's going to work together. And I, I really appreciate that you sharing that with, because I, I often wonder if people think, oh, I don't want to, you know, I just have a small, a small blush. I was once if I get, you know, really big and I can't grow. So I love that you shared that there's room to grow. Um, the, the, you mentioned something about filling a year's worth of something. Does every publishing company have like a certain amount of titles of books that they accept every year? Like, is there a limit? I think there generally is. Um, in, in our case, uh, we we only take on uh, four or five titles a year usually. Sometimes it's a few Ooh. more than that. Uh, it can be as oh. many as uh, many as ten in, a, in, a, in an exceptional year, but usually it's a small number. Okay. And and one of the oh. reasons for that is we work closely with our public with our authors. So one of the key benefits mm-hmm. I believe of of, uh, of joining a small publishing house, especially in the beginning is that certainly in our case, and I think in the case of a number of of smaller publishers, um, we tend to work more extensively and closely with the author to develop the work. So they may have written, you know, quite an interesting, uh, say, well-written novel or a uh, well-written nonfiction work, but it may have a number of not only spelling and grammatical errors, but also, uh, you know, missing content, uh, crucial content, mm-hmm. uh, ambiguous phrasing, uh, where you're not quite sure what they're saying, um, yeah. taking, you know, they may take too long to get to the point, that type of thing. Uh, so yeah. working with a publishing house, uh, with professional publishers, and I, I think, you, as you mentioned, you know, I've got quite a bit of background in that. I've uh, worked for some of the mm-hmm. largest newspapers in Canada, the Globe and Mail, Toronto Star, uh, Hamilton Spectator, and so on, and also, uh, you know, have have uh, I've written a number of books myself and written the forwards to, an even larger number. Uh, so it it becomes a case of lending this expertise to the to the author, helping them develop their book into something that is far more publisher something that's publishable rather, something that's going to uh, resonate more with readers and is going to more directly find uh, the audience that they're looking for. Uh, another yeah. thing we do oh, is, yeah. Yeah, sorry, we, we come up with titles as well. So we, we from, at one point mm-hmm. we were approached by um, someone who'd written a terrific book uh, about the 1948 Canadian uh, Olympic team. And this team was, because, because this happened over the, you know, after the Second World War, the Canadian government thought, well, you know, we're not, we don't have enough talent to uh, to have a, a Canadian Olympic team, hockey team, play uh, in the Olympics, and so they they didn't want one there. Well, the Air Force, an Air Force captain, rather, in the Canadian uh, Air Force, decided, you know, he didn't like that, so he decided to put together a team. The team uh, played an exhibition game against uh, McGill University, lost heavily. Uh, they were widely okay. ridiculed, and so on. And uh, oh, they ended God. up. Yeah, it was terrible. They went overseas in a in, the, in by the furnace room. That's the only place they could stay on the ship. Uh, they were scrounging oh, ice time for practice from from. And so and so he wrote the the fellow who wrote the book about this. It's just an incredible story. Um, he he called it you know uh, move over Cinderella, which you know oh. I mean. So all the big publishing houses turn it down because it's just a, a terrible name for a book like this. Yeah. And the story is that yeah. although they was ridiculed, although they borrowed all their equipment, although they borrowed ice time, although they, they lost their goalie when they were checked at the American border, um, because in those days you had to board a ship to uh, Lucerne, Switzerland, and everything in Canada, of course, was frozen during the during the Winter uh, mm-hmm. Olympics, so they had to go down to New York. When they crossed the American border, uh, they had to go through physicals, and the goalie was found with a spot on his lung, which they thought was tuberculosis. So they, um, oh. they refused him entry into the states, and so they had to get a they had to get a goalie at the last minute, and they got this scrawny kid from uh, 
who, who worked for a Toronto bakery, and he was in a Toronto bakery league of different bakeries. They all played hockey together, and that's how amateur it was. And and then they went over to Lucerne, Switzerland, and and uh, and on the board of the ship, they went up onto the top deck for the first time because the Americans invited them up there, and then the Americans were crowing about how they were going to win gold, and they jerked their the one guy jerked his thumb <laughs> over to. Canadians and said, and we're going to beat these guys by three goals. That's why they're brought up there, just to be humiliated. So then the... Oh, then the, oh uh, that's horrible. Oh, my goodness. Uh, isn't that incredible? And then, and then the Canadian team hit the ice, and they won gold. They literally won gold oh. at the Olympics, and, they, and then they went on to the World Championships, and they won gold there as well. And oh there's pictures goodness. of... Uh, and Barbara Ann Scott, who's a very famous figure skater commentator, she won gold at those Olympics too. And we actually had photos of the Canadian uh, hockey players lifting her on their shoulder, lifting her on their shoulders, and her biting oh, her gold medal. Oh, that's fun! Gold, <laughs> and they all they, and they they won gold. So so the, he comes up with the title, you know, um, you know, uh, move over Cinderella, and then it was. You know, the 1948 Canadian hockey team went to live. Like it was like a, right. a, a two paragraph long, you know, secondary title. So the big publishers right. looked at this and they said, you know, this is, you know, we're just not interested. They just, they just didn't even take a closer mm-hmm. look. The title was terrible. And so we looked right. at the fact, I looked at the fact that, that, you know, here's a team that was ridiculed, right? Because they, they lost like uh, 5 nothing to McGill University, which was a third rate university hockey team before they, you know, went overseas. And they had virtually no support, and then they, that went into the negatives um, after they lost that game. And the whole country thought they were going to be an embarrassment, and they went over and they won gold. So I said to the author, I said, well, here's your title, Gold Medal Misfits. Aww, and he said, oh, that's perfect. And he said, let me think about that. He says, I don't know, I miss it? I, I don't know. And then he got back to me and he said, well, you know, he said, I ran it by about 20 people. And I said, yeah. And he said, every one of them loved it. <laughs> so I said, okay. Yeah. And he said, so he says, yes, yeah, got our title. And, and, and sure enough, you know, with the new title, the book certainly resonated with a lot more readers and uh, you know, reached people, told the story better, basically. And I love that you shared that. So with all the listeners right now who are, you know, with their book, it often, you know, for me, I think of a title and then I write the story usually around the title because I think that's the, that captures the essence. But sometimes maybe real people do, the authors, they struggle with knowing that title. But I love that, that you just shared with everybody that, first of all, I can hear the passion that you already feel with the books that you can, that you've um, accepted or worked with. And that's, and it's two points with this for the listeners. First thing is, you want your publishing company, everybody, your, whoever you choose to go with, you want them to have the passion that Mike just shared about even with him and even how you told the story. I was involved. I was like, oh, what happened? And, you know, I was very emotionally interested. But the title, if, if the authors out there right now or the soon-to-be authors, they're struggling with the title, just hang tight. Don't worry because there's, there are people out there who will understand your story, be able to help you and walk you through that. And, and I also thirdly want to say that I'm so happy that you shared that that's something that a perhaps a, you know the smaller ones would do now do the larger publishing house work that closely would you say or you know they, they try to give as much time as they can and you're just saying that you know it's with you yourself you know you're able to have that more one-on-one time with them is that what you're sharing i i believe so yeah i think i think that's an excellent point too i mean we we are far more hands-on i think in the case of the large the giant publishers will say they're they're looking for people who already have, you know, their total game together, so to speak. Um, they're looking for right. gotcha. you know authors who are tremendous communicators. You know, especially for say nonfiction mm-hmm. self help books. I mean, before these people are even published, they already have a large audience. They're already used to public speaking. They're already used to, you know, expressing themselves very well. You know, a lot of them are already employing you know you know, top editors and so on. And some of them have started out, you know, even, you know, possibly self-publishing or going with smaller publishing houses. And then, again, the giants look at them and they say, okay, you know, we're ready to, you know, we'll take you on now. There's no, there's zero risk, basically. You've proven that right. you're a best-selling author. We'll just basically, you know, add you to our, our fold. 
Well, yeah, I think, I think. Well, I think you know, there, there's, there's, there's pros and cons of that because the pros, of course, is that it's, you know, among the pros is is that it's, you know, you're dealing with a larger publishing house. They've got more reach, that type of thing. Yeah. The cons yeah. are that you're one of, you know, hundreds of authors that they're representing. And, you know, if if you need, you know, help with something. If your first time uh, around, help. Yeah, you're you're probably less likely to get it. I mean, I don't think they, uh, from what I've heard anyway, a lot of them do not right. sort of take the real hands-on approach. They assume that the author has got it all together, knows exactly what they're doing, has the huge audience already, and all they really need to do is just simply possibly book them some venues and shows and that type of thing. And and um, exactly. Well, just because we're take- we're going to end up getting cut off, and I want to wrap this up really because we only have literally one minute. And I want to say first of all, thank you, Mike, for sharing. And I'm, I'll probably end up um, asking a few interview question styles so I can post it and, and write it to share with everybody. But if I, the one thing I wanted to say to ask you, if you can say in 30 seconds, is once uh, if a person has written the book. The best step is for them to take their time to research the right publishing company, um, and and you would I would love for them to even explore with you. Um, how could they write to you or to see, to find out if, if that you're somebody they could work with? Well, our our email address is M as in Mike, B as in Barry, uh, Davy, and that's D as in Donald, A, V as in Victor, I E, at Manor M A N O R, and then a little hyphen. Not a, like a little dash, and then uh, a dash, house yeah. hwsd dot biz biz and Bob I Z. Perfect. And that's the best way. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'll I'll put all that up on my post as well. And Mike, thank you so much. I'll I'll write you a little note, and we can answer some more questions that people have sent in. I really really appreciate it. We'll hear everybody and talk to everybody next week. And thank you again, Mike. Well, thanks very much, Lisa. Pleasure being on your show. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye.